another weekly vlog, another start to the vlog in the kitchen. You already know how it works, guys. Greetings and salutations and welcome to my new weekly vlog. Very exciting stuff over here if I do say so myself. Today is Friday, March 1st, baby. So I think we're starting off the month quite nicely with a new weekly reading vlog and getting back to the routine and the swing of things, which is exactly what I wanted for the beginning of March. I went to the gym this morning, which is why the hair is wet. I feel like also all of the recent reading vlogs that I've started, I feel like I've started with my, my hair wet, but it's just part of the routine. So went to the gym, washed the hair. Apartment is clean. Everything is looking amazing for the weekend. And very exciting things are happening this weekend. So we've got sprints on Sunday. As per usual, nothing new there. Today, I am going out with one of the besties. I'm going to introduce her to you guys in a little bit. You guys have seen her in B-roll in the past. However, it's time we properly introduce her to the channel's lore. And so you guys are gonna meet her in a second, but we're gonna go out for lunch to work together at one of our favorite coffee shops, which I've introduced her to and she's fallen in love. We love, you guys know how I've talked about Cafe Unido before and how it's one of my favorite go to coffee stores here in Panama. I almost said bookstores and then that just like crossed wires, but coffee shops, you guys know what I mean. And so she's fallen in love with it. I love introducing new people to it because they really do have some of the best food, some of the best drinks, the best chai latte. It's just so freaking fantastic. So we're going over there for lunch to work. I'm gonna get some reading done and then we're gonna come back and hang out for a bit. So it's just going to be a full Friday hangout, which is going to be amazing. And tomorrow, my aunt is coming over and she is delivering the painting that I got commissioned with her. I'm so excited. So I've talked about it before, but my aunt paints and this is something that I very much wanted to have a piece of hers in my household, in my living room, because I've been looking to renew a lot of things furniture wise. That also includes my couch. So I do feel like the things may collide for a little bit there, but it's going to be fine. So she's coming over tomorrow with the actual professional to safely transport the piece over here and to actually put it up and then we're going to have lunch together i'm cooking so that's very very exciting and that's basically the day tomorrow plus doing obviously some work for the beginning of the month because patreon things are always heavy at the beginning of the month for me i'm always scheduling out things and planning out things in advance just to make sure that everything is kind of in order because there is tons to get done from in-feed updates to scheduling live shows to carrying out live shows to reading books putting book updates of containing discord and a bunch of other things that I need to be on top of. And so tomorrow is also going to be an admin day for that as it is the beginning of the month. The light will fluctuate for a second because Syl is currently sitting behind you guys. And so we've got a little bit of company, but it's fine because she is also a star, so I can't say much on that end. But before I get started with today's video, I need to give a huge shout out to BookBolt for partnering with me today. They are the most comprehensive, low content book publishing software in the market today. And they have enabled thousands of self-published authors to sell their books and products through Amazon so that they can reach their millions of customers on an everyday basis. Now with BookBolt's creative design and their analytics, you're able to create low content books in as little as 10 minutes. And this is a great way to make some side passive income so that you can add that to your regular income, to your regular nine to five, pay a few extra bills without as much effort. Now, when I say low content, I mean anything from notebooks to journals, to planners, to composition notebooks, anything that doesn't require you to write a full length novel. So with BookBolt, you can use their templates, their free copyright images and create said book, but then you can take that to Amazon and publish that through them with zero upfront costs. So while BookBolt handles all of the creative research analytical side to not only make the product and know how to position yourself on the market. Amazon does the hard work of actually printing out the books, shipping the books, and handling customer service. So these two things work in tandem, but it really is a great way to get yourself out there and get that extra little bit of cash, which never really hurt anybody. People from all over the world can use BookBolt and use KDP on Amazon as well and publish their work. So this is not only contained to the US and there are people making upwards of thousands of dollars just creating low content books and creating tons of different products products and listing them there. So if you'd like to check out BookBolt, I'll leave it linked at the top of the description. And you can use my code MELREADS for a free trial plus a 20% off for life on your monthly subscription. Don't say I didn't tell you. I've started a book. And so let us fetch the book. Let us talk about it for a little bit there. And let us also pack the bag because I need to take like chargers, you know, AirPods, all the different things. And so let us go fetch all the necessary things and let us fetch the book most importantly, so that I can give you a little intro to it before we get further away 
ways into it and I need to give you more updates. Two of the main components have been fetched, also known as the AirPods, which I realize is probably not the best decision I'm ever going to make to wear these as my hair is wet, but the other ones I have not charged. So I should probably leave those charging as I go to the coffee shop, but I have got headphones with me. We've got Hopeless by Elsie Silver. If you guys watched my March TBR, I love that that's what triggered the, the memory that I need to upload today, is that I was gonna say, if you've watched my March TBR, then you'd know that I rolled this over from my February TBR, and I kept it in because I kept thinking, I'm gonna need an Elsie Silver book at some point, and the time is here. Listen, I love Elsie Silver's writing. I love the fact that she will always pull me out of a reading slump. She will always keep me afloat and going. It takes all of the anxieties away. It's like wearing noise-canceling headphones. That's what an Elsie Silver book feels like. That's a really weird comparison. But in Hopeless, we follow Bo. He has just come back from a mission he had as a special ops, and he went missing for a week, I think, is like the specific amount of time, or maybe a little bit over that. I can't remember at this point. And so he's just recently come back home, and he is dealing with a lot of PTSD. He's dealing with some sort of alcohol abuse, is my understanding of his character. And his family, seemingly, I haven't gotten there yet, but that's just part of the synopsis. There's like some sort of pressure from his family to not only start dating, but to also obviously try and get back into somewhat normal life. So that means getting into therapy, continuing with his physical therapy as well, and just going through all of the channels necessary for him to feel his best after what he experienced. And so he decides that the best way to go about all that is to fake a relationship and fake an engagement with one of the local bartenders called Bailey. And so they strike this fake relationship and it goes from there. It's also an age gap romance. So he is, I think, 35. She's 22 or 23, which I know is not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I personally really love that. As long as both people are really, really mature and they're on the same, you know, headspace in, uh, where their lives are at, I think if that makes sense, then the relationship sort of makes sense, especially if it's not a situation where there's a lot of like power dynamics or a lot of disparities and the maturity levels were there. I, I personally really enjoyed if it's well done. So I really like it in book format too. So I'm excited to keep on going. I've actually been hiding the tassel from the book, which is why it looks a little bit weird because the cats try and bite it and I'm not trying to lose bookmarks. And so this is the book I'm taking with me and let us pack a little bag because again, I need to take a bunch of stuff with me to get all of the necessary reading and working done. So let us fetch all of those things and let us also meet Alex. Cause again, you guys need her for the lore of the channel. And then we'll go to the coffee shop, which is gonna be great. Alex. <laughs> Honestly, she is one of the happiest, just like perkiest people I know. And one of the best people I know. This is Alex. So you. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the coffee store. Buenas, buenas. Really unflattering angle to start out this clip, but a girl is back home. A nightly shower has been taken. This is not the most flattering of lights, but we're here. And I did read a little bit of Hopeless. This is what I'm bringing to the bedroom that I can read a little bit more before I go to bed. But I got to chapter six. So this is page 65 of Hopeless. So I did manage to read this today. And it's so interesting how this connection develops between Bo and Bailey, because it really is a relationship born out of both being very misunderstood people and feeling kind of at peace and zen with each other in ways that other people don't allow. And so for Bailey, she's part of a family that's been known to do very shady things. So they are in the drug business, in some sort of illegal business, whereas the Eaton family for Bo is considered to be I guess like the golden family of this town and they are considered some of the best people around. So whereas she is expected to be a shitty person as a consequence of being a part of this family, Bo is expected to be the golden boy as being part of the Ethan family. And that doesn't necessarily fit their personalities or who they are as people at all. And so with each other, it really does seem like they can be the realest 
than with anybody else. And so there's just a bigger understanding by itself with each other as far as these great expectations that are kind of put on the both of them and how it's immensely taxing to have to live with that every day. And Bo feels very at peace with Bailey and Bailey feels very protected by Bo. So I think on both sides, it kind of seems to quiet down all the demons that are present in their respective lives. She doesn't really get peace. She works at a bar. She's a bartender. She works really long hours. Some really horrible people walk in and out of the establishment. They have a lack of respect for her. They feel entitled to her body in ways that they really are not. And then for Bo specifically, it seems like everybody is more curious about his service as a special ops and the entire journey and going missing and then the medical procedures afterwards to perform skin grafts so that his skin can heal the best that it can. And so people are more curious about all of these morbid details of, of his, you know, of this massive event in his life rather than who he really is and how he's doing and if they can help in any way shape or form which is very unfair and crazy because it definitely makes it seem like an entire spectacle as the story begins and so I can definitely see the appeal in these two people liking each other in that she doesn't treat him delicately because he went through these series of events she treats him like she would anybody else and she's very assertive with you know don't talk to me like that or don't drink too much give me your keys if you're drunk and wanting to drive back home. Actually drink all these different teas so that you can sober up and she's very responsible when it comes to him and she never talks to him in a condescending way because of his pre-existing history and with her he is very much I guess like that male figure that she has lacked in her life and so he is very protective of her and he also loves hearing her opinions, her takes, her voice in general, it seems like her presence alone is very soothing for him in the same way that his is for her. And so it's very, very endearing to kind of see these two people connect in ways that they're not able to connect with a lot of other people. And so that's been kind of the beginning of the book, just establishing this connection between the two of them to kind of see where we go from there. But I'm gonna go brush my teeth and get ready for bed because after I got my gum procedure done two weeks ago, I've had to switch up my entire lineup of products for teeth cleaning all the things. The routine is now very extensive, all for the sake of having healthy gums because I've always suffered from like really sensitive gums, one, but also inflammation in the gums and so we're trying to prevent a lot of further issues at the moment and that obviously includes taking care of that aspect of it so let us go take care of that and then i am going to bed seas but yeah i'm gonna go brush the teeth seas and i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> is a new day friends welcome to saturday i am a little bit still sleepy but i woke up early we've gotten ready for the day and i genuinely would not have gotten ready had it not been for the fact that my aunt is coming over with the commissioned piece that we're going to hang in my living room and the fact that she is going to be recording the whole journey so that she can put it up on her socials and so that's where we're at and i'm very tired i need a tea desperately i was gonna say coffee but i'm trying to lay off the coffee a little bit because i had too much caffeine last week and i don't want to mess it up because I've been writing a good a good time when it comes to my temporal mandibular disorder and whatnot and so I don't want to overdo it so control is key when it comes to these things and so a good old lemon ginger tea with some honey I think is gonna do the trick but look at this I totally just messed it up when I was putting on my mascara but the number one trick when this happens is to let it dry una costrita it just becomes a little scab and it's easier to kind of take off so I just had to wait a little bit be patient with it even though it's frustrating to see it there and that's it it's gone no shadow or anything yeah i just got ready for the day and the plans for the day have changed actually i had initially planned to get the commission piece i was going to cook lunch for my aunt and myself i'm going to make a little fried rice today with some honey chicken and so my plan was to do that and then just kind of read the rest of the day chill i was planning on maybe doing some public sprints today because i wasn't able to do those yesterday but my brother which is great news 
Cruz, he got accepted to his dream college here in Panama, is doing all of the evals today, like all of the proper, you know, like documentation and whatnot. And so we are celebrating that today. And my mom said we would convene at around like 3 p.m. or so. That's also going to be a part of the day. The hair is also going crazy. It's just a little too wild and voluminous today. So what I'm thinking is we can just put it up to not have to worry about this. But those are the updates of the morning. So not much different from yesterday, thankfully. And I was gonna mention something else. I knew I had a different update to give and now I can't remember what that update is, but I'm sure I'll remember as I get the morning tasks done, you know, and the painting is brought over. Right, that was the other thing. I need to go fetch my packages. I just don't know that I'm gonna do that today, though I may coerce my aunt to be like, hey, do you wanna go over? Because I've got quite a bit of packages waiting on there. And so may as well just pick those all up today with her. So I'm going to just text her too to see like where she's at and to see what the, the ETA is. But there's that. I also have been watching The Bachelor. Hello. As I have been <laughs> getting ready. And this season is not my favorite season because I, I feel like the drama is kind of like lackluster. The villain that they've set up for the season is also kind of lackluster. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty enjoyable season and it's a breath of fresh air, honestly, to see The Bachelor being a good person because I think it's been too long since we've seen that. There's, there has been a lot of shitty bachelors. And so I think on that end, it's really good. And let us make some tea. While we chat about Hopeless, I did get to page, ooh, 120 something. I can't remember. And the way that the fake relationship, fake engagement comes up is nothing like I imagined. Because I thought it was mostly going to be the fact that Bo's family is very intense about him going to family functions and him showing up in the ways that he used to before the accident happened. And while that is a part of the dynamic, there's another element going into it that I definitely did not expect. I'm not going to mention what it is because I, I would say it's like far enough into the book. It happens like 80 pages in. It's like far enough into the book that I definitely wouldn't want to ruin. I guess like that shock for you guys if you are planning on going into the book. And so, oh my God, I just noticed this was open. It's a miracle I didn't get wet. And so that has been really, really good. They've got great chemistry with each other and it's the way that they're they're continuously fighting their attraction for each other while fake dating at the same time. That is honestly just elite at this point in time. So I'm having a lot of fun. She really told this man, and she said that jokingly, but she said, I want a ring so big that my hand will fall off just by having it on. And this man went ahead and got her a huge fucking engagement ring and I love that. So it's a great time so far. I am really, really enjoying it and I can't wait to keep on reading. I can't wait for her to meet the Eatons because I think just based on her personality, she is going to fit into this chaotic bunch so much. I'm so excited about it. And so I, I can't wait for that to happen because I think it's going to ensue rather soon at this point. And I just know that shit's gonna be a shit show quite literally. And then the other Elsie Silver related thing she recently announced the re-covers. Re is that what you would say it? The re the redesign. There we go. Her redesigned covers for the companion series, the sister story plus some others. And so I have been wanting to read that series a lot. I don't know how it compares to the Chestnut Spring series. I don't know if it's equally as good, if maybe the writing's a little bit wonky just because they are older, but they are being traditionally published now. And the covers are stunning. Like I'll just pop them up right here again. I absolutely love these new covers. The composition is just stunning. I love the different colors. I love the fonts, just like everything about it. I mean, honestly, anything is better than the real people covers. That's just like my opinion. I cannot wait to get those read. And so once I finish Hopeless, I'll have that to look forward to. Like I'm reading Hopeless in March. In April, Wild Love comes out. So I'll have that Elsie Silver to read then. And then these editions come out in June, I think. So it would be like a two month wait. I don't think that's too bad. So I'll have an Elsie Silver book practically for every month until kind of like the fall season, which I think is gonna be perfect. So I'm very excited about it. So yes, but I'm honestly so happy to be back in the Chestnut Springs with Bo 
know who I surprisingly am really enjoying. I've talked about this before, but I didn't particularly care for Bo or his story or even his personality. And I bought the book because might as well just see it to the end and I'll probably will go back to read Flawless just to again read the entirety of the thing because I know it may not be as good as like some of the other stories but still I can't not do it. I'm actually quite enjoying his personality. You can see that he is kind of just like his brothers like he is very charming. He loves teasing. He has a good sense of humor. Like I really do think this book is bringing out all of his best qualities versus him showing up in other people's books where he is really not that great a person or at least doesn't come up as that great a person. I am quite enjoying seeing this side of him because it's not really something we have seen before. That whole thing said, having a good time. I hope it continues that way and I will chat with you guys later. <laughs> got a new painting. It's so freaking good. It looks so stunning. And I wish you guys could see this in person because there are colors that simply look too good in person versus on camera, but it's up. It's here. My aunt, mi tia, you want to say something? Quieres decir algo? Okay. <laughs> I feel also so weird without my glasses on, but it just looks so freaking stunning. And obviously like the couch is another piece that I want to change at some point in time so that it better complements this and the rest of the living room, especially since I changed my chairs too. Can we just talk about the piece though? Next order of business, we're going to go fetch some chai lattes. Then we're going to go look for an art supply because she wants to do a little dedication at the back. Quieres una dedicación para atrás, verdad? Yes, my dear. <laughs> And then we're gonna go to the bookstore because it's in the same little like plaza. And so we're gonna do a little two for one. And it's very exciting. exhausted. I need like the sunlight. So I'm just like sun soaking while we update the vlog. Today's Sunday. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Welcome to a new day. But I came back home last night super late. So basically I showed you guys yesterday how my aunt came over. She brought over the painting. That part was good. We went out, got chai lattes, went to the bookstore. Didn't find anything at the bookstore. Though I did meet a very lovely girly pop who also is like very into books. And we just had a very um, amazing conversation about like what books we like and recommendations and everything. And so it was a great time. I go there all the time, even if I'm not gonna buy something. And the cashier is absolutely lovely. She's great to have a conversation and talks with. So I just kind of hung around with my aunt. And then my mom and my brother came over for lunch. You guys also saw that too. I made some fried rice with some honey chicken. It was really, really good. And then we went over to my mom's partner's house and that I didn't record anything of because we were going to celebrate. My brother is getting into like his dream college and all of the good things and all of the good news. And so we went over there to celebrate, play some NBA jam, <laughs> play some video games and have some good food. And I literally came back home at 12.30, didn't go to bed until 2 a.m., woke up at 
initially seven, went back to bed, really got up at eight. And now we're here. I'm sprinting right now. The sprints are going on in the office. But the first thing I have to update you on is hopeless because I took this book with me to the celebration. And as a lot of NBA jam rounds were happening that didn't involve me, I read this much. Like it was a problem. So I had already gotten to page 120. Now I'm on page 351. I haven't updated you for like a solid 230 pages. And I apologize. This book is simply too good. And it is the type of book that I don't want it to ever end. But I also really want to see how everything pans out for these two characters. And the chemistry they have is insane. And to think that Bailey is you know not only is she a virgin but she's very like inexperienced when it comes to these things but because she has read and seen so much she definitely seems much more like well versed than she like you know probably technically should because of like the inexperience and so the fact that she is unafraid to embrace that aspect of her because she mentions it in the book she's like it's not that i'm like this archetype because i think i should be like saving myself for anything or because i don't want to like lord knows at this point i give it to just about anybody <laughs> <laughs> but it's because like it just hasn't taken priority in my life versus all these other things happening and the fact that Bo is so understanding of that and so respectful of it and the way that their you know physicality comes about and like those levels of intimacy it's just like so good on that side but I also love because I always say this when it comes to intimacy there are so many different versions of it right I think a lot of people associate intimacy to only having sex or doing some sort of like foreplay to sex doing you know anything wholly physical and sexual but cuddling for a lot of people can be intimacy sharing a very good conversation is intimacy giving somebody a massage is intimacy like there are just so many different versions of what that means to specific people and specific couples and the fact that we see so many different levels of it here with these two characters is such an enjoyable ride honestly and seeing bailey be such a no bullshit personality like she and and I love that Cade, which is the brother that we see in book two, comes up to Bailey and he says, you're exactly what he needs because he is so used to getting his way, doing whatever he wants, escaping from situations and hiding from the world, us having to thread so carefully around him because we don't really know what is acceptable and what isn't. He needs somebody who will put him in his place, who will tell him his bullshit like it is. And I love that Bailey is that figure for him as much as he is for her like it really does seem like these two people are equally matched when it comes to their personalities and their way of handling the other because they are so similar and because they have experienced so much of the same hardships there are obviously like loads of different ones as well he comes from privilege she does not obviously he was in the military she was not and so there are there are things that still kind of separate them and, and that are not so similar but the end result attitude wise is not so dissimilar they definitely complement each other so incredibly well and this is the case of even though she is 22 and he is 35 there is such a good understanding of the other person and of this partnership that it she definitely doesn't read at 22 if the the matter of, of age wasn't part of the question if it wasn't mentioned you know as as however many times as it is you wouldn't be able to tell fully that this is somebody who is like 13 years younger and i really love the way that elsie silver is navigating all of that i think she's doing so wonderfully and i'm just having a really good time the way the fake relationship is going you can tell it's not fake at all because nobody who is faking a relationship with you does the things that Bo does for Bailey or that Bailey does for Bo and so the lines are so very blurred and they've always been because they both entered this agreement already liking each other and so I can't wait to see when the confessions come about and when the change in dynamic comes about what that's gonna look like because I think it's gonna be really really good but I'm having the best time and I also think their banter is amazing he literally calls her sugar tits <laughs> and that's after attempting to call her baby doll and a bunch of other like pet names and she's like not that one not that one and now just to just to tease her he goes sugar tits and she just calls him soldier which am i picturing bucky barnes as i read this fuck yes like who wouldn't i'm sad that it's the last chestnut springs book again i am gonna go back and read flawless at this point just because i can't go without elsie silver for a few months and so i'm thinking that'll carry me over again between that and wild love for a little bit there and then the other thing we have to do is that we have to open a few packages because i 
I went to my PO box yesterday as part of the entire errand run. And so I've got packages with me. I'm gonna show you guys. I think it's exciting. It may not appear so because I'm tired, but I promise that they are. Need to figure out breakfast. Don't know what I'm gonna have for breakfast. Also wanna make myself a tea, I think, just to at least have something warm and cozy. So let me fetch the packages. Let us look at those and then let us make food choices because Anna girl is tired. We have got packages. I actually got a few other ones, but a few of them are not for me. Another one is for a sponsorship, so I can't really show you guys that, but I can show you these. So the first thing I ended up ordering was a few shorts from H&M. I got the most flattering, tight-fitting shirt from H&M. And I got it here in Panama. The only issue with that shirt was that it fit so well that I wanted more than one color. And sadly, they only had that color, which is kind of like this shade of gray. And so I ended up just getting the one. And I got a long sleeve version of it, kind of in this beige, ish shade that I have just here in the background. And then I went online and I got the colors that I wanted that they didn't have here. So let me show you. What I have an abundance of in my closet, which you guys know, is hoodies, is sweatshirts, graphic tees, don't we know it? But I don't really have a whole lot of basic shirts, like one color only. And I love those because you're able to mix and match those however you want. It's easier to change up a look but with the same piece. And so I need more staple pieces in my closet is what I've realized. And as I continuously work in therapy for my eating disorder and for my body dysmorphia, I am becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of wearing something tight, which is part of the reason why you guys have seen me only in like hoodies and sweatshirts for a really long time. It's because a girl is, you know, it's been a long battle, but this is kind of part of, I guess, like my exposure therapy in a way of like, listen, we look good, but we need to get outside of the brain. And so this is like my own way of almost like forcing myself to see that there is nothing to fear. And so we have got several different options here. So I got a large again in all of these and the long sleeves as well. I absolutely love this because again, it's like stretchy. I also love the neck. My biggest pet peeve when it comes to t-shirts is when the neck is like, down to here. I hate that. I don't want that. I don't like wearing shirts like that. I much prefer shirts where the, the neck is actually hitting your neck and it's not hitting like your chest because it's just weird. And so a lot of the tight fitting shirts that I've tried in the past do write down whether because of my boobs, because listen, there's a lot of boobage here or just because the fit is, is not great, even though I am wearing my size. And so I do like that these sit at the right spot. One and two, the fabric is so opaque that no matter how much you stretch it you can't really see like anything underneath because i find that a lot of these shirts as well tend to get pretty see-through especially around like the boob area and i'm not trying to show everybody my bra like that and so i actually really really love these and they're not expensive they're actually more expensive in the States than they are in Panama, which I find fascinating. Because when I got mine here in Panama, it was nine bucks and these were 12 in the States. So I don't know what y'all are doing over there, but it's, it's a little bit pricier. So I ended up getting the long sleeve in a black as well. And I completely forgot. I actually got these ones in extra large to have a little bit more room so that these are not so tight on me. And so I did get these in an extra large to kind of have a little bit of wiggle room. I also got, I love that Sil is just playing with the bags. I the back. But I also got the short sleeve one in black because I needed it. And I think that's gonna look so freaking cute again. Just like a simple outfit. This, some jeans with my buckle belt. And then last but not least for this type of shirt, I got a gray one also short sleeved because they didn't have a lot of the colors in the long sleeve ones. So ended up getting a gray one, which kind of looks cream anyway, but I promise it's gray. So I ended up getting this in a large as well. I couldn't find the white one it was sold out and those are the shirts that i got because again we're trying to switch things up and help ourselves a little bit and then i got this one from amazon which is probably less exciting than a clothing haul <laughs> but i did get this toothpaste which is the one that my periodontist sent me i like this a lot more than the typical like colgate oral b and all those different things because i really dislike the taste of regular mint toothpaste it tastes so rank to me I prefer this a lot more. So this is the Curaprox BU toothpaste. And this is, I think this is watermelon, yes. And I absolutely love this. It feels so 
much better on the teeth. It doesn't feel like it's stripping your teeth bare. In comparison to the typical ones I've tried in the past, it feels super smooth, super gentle, and it tastes good as well. And I genuinely feel like it's helping my teeth instead of like wearing them down. And so I ended up getting the, the big size of it because I've been using kind of like the, the smaller, I think it's like the 10 ml, the travel size, because I got a kit of them because they didn't have the full size here in Panama. And so I ended up getting it on Amazon because I couldn't find it here. And then I got a book because how could I order a toothpaste without a book? And I ordered One Dark Window because everybody and their mother has raved about One Dark Window. Barry and Lute announced that this was going to be one of their picks way back when. I got really excited because it was said that this book's magic system is inspired on tarot cards. I think that's super fascinating, super different to anything I've seen before. You guys know if you've been here for a while, I love anything to do with tarot and oracle cards. I would love to see that in a book and if it's done well, what what more could I want? And so ended up getting this. I don't fully know what this is about and I'm honestly going to keep it that way because I don't want to know too much. Walk out disappointed. So I think I'm just going to keep it a little secret and very exciting for myself. And I am thinking of putting this in my April TBR if a prompt does help me out. So you know, much to think about for the future. And actually the cover is not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I don't particularly love this cover. I think the cover for book two is a lot prettier, but it's not as bad, honestly. I thought this was gonna be like hideous when it got here, but it's not so bad. <laughs> I had to take off my glasses because I got a little bit of a pressure headache when I was wearing them. I also love that there's like this piece at the back that's doing its own thing. And you can also see my old painting just hanging out here in the office. Well, I figure out what to do with it because I generally don't know what to do with it. I don't know if I want to hang it anywhere else in my apartment or if I am going to pass it on to one of my friends. All of my friends have expressed interest of getting it in some way, shape or form because they really do love the piece. And the piece is stunning, honestly. It, it was just a matter of I wanted something unique uniquely mine in the living room because this painting, although it's really gorgeous, it's just, you know, like the generic ones that you get at the home goods store. And so there's kind of that. So I need to figure that out. I did finish Hopeless by Miss Elsie Silver. And I'm a little bit torn on what to do with this one because I think towards the end, it gave me a little bit of the ick. <laughs> I think we were doing so good, steadily good. Everything was panning out nicely. Everything made sense. And then the ending of the book felt like being doused in cold water because is I feel for the first time, it was very noticeable that there was an age gap in that she became extremely insecure on their relationship, even though he was very reassuring. She felt very insecure about their union, about their dynamic, about them being together realistically and not just the fake kind of way. I didn't realize that this was like, she hadn't, she at this point in time, she hasn't gone to college, which honestly makes sense with like everything else happening in her life. But at 22, she, she hasn't gone to college and she's still planning on going. And so by the end of the book, there's like this huge, you know, cloud hanging in the, in the air above both of these characters about her going to the city for college and obviously this 35 year old man seeking a very obviously different path, not college, because his life is made. And so I think that was a little bit off-putting. The thing with age gaps that's so interesting and it may be different for everybody, but I think when I think specifically about age gapped relationships, I think of people that in age maybe there may be a difference but when it comes to life when it comes to their business you know they're pretty similar like you you're living out on your own you're maintaining your household you're paying all your bills and you're doing a lot of very similar things and, and the planes of existence are not so far out removed from each other that there's this huge reminder of the age difference. And I think towards the end, it did exactly what I don't particularly love with age gap romances. And so I'm still torn on what to give it. I'm like either a three or a four. Bailey, also her attitude towards the end. Again, I was really, really loving her all the way through the book. And then she started saying some very unreasonable, illogical things towards the end. Where I was like, girl, how do you jump that hoop? Like, how do you run so fast that you you don't even know how you got to the end goal. Like I just, it was one of those weird ass things that <laughs> I was reading and I was like, did you really just say that? Cause that makes 
no sense and you know it. It was just very, very crazy to me. And so I'm thinking a 3.5 is probably where I'm gonna go with this one. I gave it a four star on Goodreads because I was like, immediately it was a four star. I think the more I sit with the ending and, and the dynamic of these two people, it definitely felt like she didn't really love Bo a whole lot. Even though throughout the book, I never got that feeling. But towards the end, it genuinely felt like he loved her more than she loved him. And so it felt like an older man trying to convince a younger girl that they need to be together. It's, I don't know, it was like a little bit weird. So I do think this is, as far as my uh, my LC Silver Chestnut Springs ranking, I think it's going right down to the bottom. Not my favorite. It had some really, really strong parts, but towards the ending. It really is that thing of, of an ending can truly make or break the, the journey, but most of it was really good. So I think, I think a 3.5 is not unreasonable. So that's the rating for this one. I don't know where I'm going next because I've got loads of options. See this next weekend I have got the live show for the February book club pick for Patreon and that is A Fragile Enchantment. Let me fetch it. Please hold. But A Fragile Enchantment is realistically the next one I need to be reading because I am barely... <laughs> two chapters in. I'm on page 22 and the live show is on Saturday. Also look at the bookmark. It's so cute. I love it so much. And so this live show is very, very soon. And I'm annotating the book as well because I kind of want to do a flip through for Patreon. But yeah, I really need to finish this and I would love to finish it early enough in the week that towards the weekend I can pick up something different. I don't have to finish this book the day of or the day before because I tend to do that a lot. It's honestly my one of my worst First habits is that I have got an entire month in two weeks most of the time to read an entire book for the book club and I end up reading it the week of and I can never get myself out of that habit though I do think this month I am going to read Bride this month and so it won't be too bad but this does need to get finished for it. I love also the straw for my emotional support water bottle just hanging on frame. But yeah, I'm thinking this is where I need to go next responsibly so. I do know the synopsis for this, but we'll get into that a little bit later when I get like a little bit further into the book that we can just break up each book section very nicely for the video. today tuesday hi friends so i completely forgot what day it was <laughs> welcome to a new day of the vlog i just got ready dressed all the things look at this breakout by the way got a pimple patch on it because it's quite bad but i need to head out grocery shopping and i need to prep my bag i should have just about everything in here because this is the tote bag i've been consistently using so i just need my glasses my journal and my pen so that i can take care of the grocery shopping and jot down everything I've gotten because you guys already know physical lists are the way to go for me. I have tried writing down the list on my phone just to be modern or whatever. I can't do that. I grew up making lists, okay? I was the person in charge of the list when I was younger when we went grocery shopping and so that habit is old and it's hard to kill. So I've got everything down on the journal and I don't know if you guys do the same thing but whenever I am thinking about what groceries to get, I always think about what recipes do I want to make this upcoming week because my entire family just buys groceries like just because I love that Vin <laughs> is just rubbing against my arm. Hi baby, do you want the pets? Hell yeah. She wants all the pets. But my family just buys groceries to buy them. They're like, listen, I'll figure it out like when I when it's time to make food. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. So I just think about what's in the roster for the week and we just go with that. So for this week, the things I am thinking about are <laughs> Caesar salads, tuna caro sandwiches because I love those a lot. Lot. I've got pollo guisado con arrocito, platanito, you guys know the vibe, some sancocho, so some soup, and then I already have some seafood on the freezer, so I just have to get like sides and stuff and veggies. Veggies I run out of quite quickly, so I just want to make sure that I've got those on deck, and then a few pantry related items and loads of cleaning products, so that's me for this upcoming week. I love that Vin is like not done. <laughs> he 
<laughs> just rubbing against the counters and me oh that's aggressive hi baby so there's that so i need to head out because it is already 1 30 and i typically go grocery shopping early because i love getting it done first thing when there's not a lot of people in at the grocery store and so i'm already going at a time where there are going to be more people than i prefer mom's gonna go grocery shopping baby <laughs> And then I'm gonna get back home and play with the cats too. The list is extensive because it's the first grocery run of the month So the things that run out kind of like on a monthly basis all need to be restocked and so hi baby girl And so let us write down baby. I need space. I need to write down Lemon tea because if I don't write it down, I forget Okay, I need to fetch a few reusable bags so that we can take care of that as well We don't have to buy new ones because another thing I forget take it back with me but let us grab those and let us skedaddle. So last we talked, I had not gone grocery shopping yet and now we're here and I have gone grocery shopping and I came back and I put all the groceries away <laughs> and I did all the things that I was supposed to do and now it's time for me to go to bed and I failed so hard at updating you today which I deeply apologize for but listen it was just a crazy day out on the street again the kids are back in school and so there were just a lot of cars loads of traffic there were also loads of people just out and about buying things but listen bridge is full we've got things just in there as well as the freezer there are things in there and everything's tidied and organized as well as the pantry it did kind of show you guys through the b-roll but we've got an organized pantry as well so all things are looking the way that they should also literally look at the pimple patch it's doing what it's supposed to do when it comes to draining the breakout but i'm getting like a similar one on this side and that's just on me getting my period soon i told my patrons about this but i'm like i didn't get my period in february and i I don't know if it was just such a short month that my body didn't have enough time to catch up to the facts that it needed to get here but i didn't get my period and so now i'm just waiting for it to get here desperately because i have been on and off cramping which only ever happens before my period gets here and then pressure headaches as well and migraines which is not great and so i think it's getting here soon but i've been thinking it's gonna get here soon for about two weeks now i'm also gonna have to take some meds tonight for my jaw because the left side is bothering me so let me fetch that before i even forget to take it and while we are here might as well update you about a fragile enchantment which i have been reading and i got 98 pages in so i'm about to start chapter 9 it's also been a hot minute since i've annotated a book because ever since i got diagnosed with carpal tunnel last year i obviously went into like treatment i had to take my meds and I had to sleep every night with my my oh what's it called with my wrist braces and so I didn't want to exacerbate the amount of things I was doing with my wrist because I was already going to the gym and that can be quite heavy on the wrist and the carpal and so that plus the editing plus everything else that I was doing I didn't want to do too much but this is the first book I have annotated in months and it feels so good and so I'm so happy that I made the choice to do it and Patreon will get a video on it because it is the February book club pick but the book is so good so basically the book is pitched as a Bridgerton meets 
fantasy romance. And while I see where the Bridgerton elements may come in, because it's supposed to be about, you know, I was gonna say mating season again. I always want to say that. And it's wrong. It's not mating season, but it's the ball season. It's courting season. And so many of the characters are looking toward engagements and marriage and these big, big steps towards building a different life and stepping into the next best thing. And so that aspect can feel very Bridgerton, especially because it's Regency. And then on top of that, we also have kind of like this gossip column called the Tattler, which is where a lot of the political gossip things end up in. And I don't particularly love the Tattler. We've only seen it once. And I kind of wish that format wise, the author would have separated it kind of like how Stephanie Garber did a in Once Upon a Broken Heart, where it actually looks like a newspaper article or like a spread in a newspaper because it just gives it a more legitimate feel, I think, <laughs> versus it just being in italics and being part of the text, which I feel takes away some of the excitement on it because we also don't get like the name of the newspaper and who's writing it. And so I, I think it, it just makes it seem less legitimate, but I get the vibe that the author is going for in terms of of Lady Whistledown, but I think those two things as far as Bridgerton, I think it's like very light Bridgerton vibes as opposed to what is being pitched as like it's strong in those vibes. I mean, if everything Regency could be pitched, would be pitched as a Bridgerton, it's not necessarily the most inaccurate thing ever, but it's also not the most accurate thing ever and we don't need to use that comp for everything. And so I think that is like my first thing to mention, but also let me just take my meds real quick. This book is basically about Neve, who is a dressmaker. She's a magical dressmaker and she gets hired to make all of the dresses and garments and the suits and just all of the pieces for the newest royal wedding. That will be for the royal prince. His name is Kit and he is a very, very standoffish, untoward, rude, often sarcastic and non-accommodating person. And so he is off the bat, just absolutely terrible to everybody. And it takes everybody by surprise when he is not necessarily as much as those things with Neve as he is with everybody else. He seems to tolerate her a lot more than he does a lot of other people. It may also just be because she's a foreigner, so she is not from his country, from his land. So maybe her being from a completely different culture may be the thing that entices him to really communicate with her in a different way. It also seems that she is one of the few people who doesn't take his bullshit. So everybody in his life seemingly just not okay when he's a little bit. And most people don't say anything. They're just like, oh yeah, the prince is kind of bratty and that's just how things are. And here comes Neve and she's like, fuck that. Do you think I'm gonna kneel? Do you really not wanna wear my garment? Then go naked. What the fuck do I care? And so I love that she has got this no bullshit persona because she is putting him in his place right from the get go. And I also think that's something that he likes and that's why he doesn't find her nowhere near as bothersome as he does the rest of the people. And so they interact quite well. There's this one scene and I, I've been saying it this whole time, like all oh, the bare minimum, I love it. But there's this one scene where she is trying to see one of the royals come in and she's just like standing on her tiptoes just trying to see everything and he literally goes hey you to the person in front of her who wasn't letting her see move aside you're in the way and I'm like oh that's kind of that's kind of cute though <laughs> So I kind of do like how he is expressing these very small pieces of, and I, not necessarily affection, because I think it's quite early for that, but of appreciation for her, because we haven't seen him be like that for anybody else. And so basically, digressing to the main point. So she's supposed to be making all the garments for his wedding. He kind of gets along with her and back, like they've got really good chemistry. They bounce back and forth quite nicely. And people take note of that really quickly because obviously he's got a reputation. And that ends up with the two of them making a feature, which I haven't gotten there yet, but the synopsis says that they start making a feature in said gossip column and that brings a lot of trouble. And I can't wait to get there because I think that's going to, you know, throw in a little bit more of a complicated dynamic for these two people. And I think it's gonna push them even closer together, which is probably not the intent. But I also have a theory as to who may be writing these columns and I may be right. So I do think I'm gonna be wrong, but I do have a theory. And so what is a good book if Mal doesn't have a good theory? I say good, I don't know if it's gonna be good, but I do have one. And so that's as far into the book as I have gotten. We have seen balls, we have seen Neve make the garments. And what's so cool is that she, depending on the intention that she is 
putting into the knitting, into the stitching, that is basically the magic aspect that is imbued into the garment. So if she's thinking about, oh, I want this person to feel regal, I want this person to feel special and loved and otherworldly when they put this garment on, she basically transfers a little bit of her magic into the garment so that the person feels and is perceived that way when they put it on. If she wants the person to not be perceived by other people and make them feel somewhat, not invisible, but that they blend in with the crowd a little bit better, the garment is able to do that, which I think is super cool. I don't think I've ever read anything quite like that. I have read books with the similar concept of, you know, magic and kind of the project runway aspect of it mixed in, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, but not to the point where such blatant magic would be stitched into a garment that way. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I think it's a good ride. I can't wait to keep reading it. I have been reading the book as I have been listening to my little lo-fi playlist. So it's a great time. It's not my playlist, but it's the one I listen to. So therefore it's mine. Um, <laughs> so that's what I've been listening to as I have been reading, which has been a really great time to also get myself in the mood and the headspace and all the things. So I have been having a good time, going to continue having a good time tomorrow because I've got sprints on Patreon. And then all of my plans changed towards the weekend because my grandpa and my grandmom and their dog, <laughs> so the whole crew is coming over to the city. And so I have cleared virtually my entire schedule for the weekend so that I can spend some time with them while they're here and they can come over, play with the cats, do the thing. We can go out for lunch or dinner, maybe go to the movie theater. My grandpa is a huge sci-fi fan. And so maybe while he's in the city, June 2 could be a great thing to take him on. I already watched the movie. I watched it with my brother, my aunt, and my uncle, and it was so freaking good. I don't want to sound like a dude bro, and in fear of doing so, I will be the person to say that Denis Villeneuve did a masterpiece. He made a masterpiece, and I will be the dude bro to say <laughs> that I don't think I have ever seen anything of this caliber since Lord of the Rings. You may come for me for saying that, but honestly, for the budget the movie had, I think it's impressive the amount of realistic CGI they managed to do. And that's coming from somebody who DNF'd Dune. And so I think it's fascinating. I think it's a great time. And it's really making me want to finish out the book and continue reading the series. And so we'll see if I do or if I don't, because I still do own the book. It's like <laughs> stuffed in somewhere at the bookshelf. But anyways, they're coming over. And the reason they're coming over is not so great, but we will take advantage of the time. Uh, my grandpa had prostate cancer in the early 2010s and he did all of the treatments for it and they were able to get it off. There was remission and still to this day, he obviously gets his checkups every once in a while, but his levels, in Spanish it's uh, PSA. I don't know if it's the same lettering in English, but I'll put it here on the screen. His levels came back up a little, a little higher than they should. They wanted him to get a parametric MRI so that they could check the prostate and see how everything's doing. So that's the reasoning for them coming to the city, which is again, not the best thing. Hopefully everything will come back okay so that we don't have to worry because in and of itself, it's already very worrying. And just given all of the medical news that have come up quite recently, we don't need another bad medical news. And so we're just trying to get that done as soon as possible so that we can just, you know, just kind of descartar, sacar eso de la cabeza, <laughs> and just kind of scratch that off the to-do list and, and see if there's anything that needs to get done and go from there. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Welcome to a weekly vlog. You guys love these. <laughs> You're welcome. She's just like, <laughs> look at the baby. Yeah. Oh, look at that little face. Yeah, babas. Yeah. Anyways, she was very excited about said marking the strap. That's that. That's the last update of the day. I'm gonna go brush my teeth as a responsible girl does and then head to bed. That's the plan. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh.
The whole family is in the frame. Good morning. Oh my God, that's so sweet, baby. Oh, look at her. Look at those eyes. Anyways, hi, good morning, everybody. I just came back from the gym. So for breakfast this morning, I'm going to make an everything bagel with some cream cheese. We're gonna do some smoked salmon. Then we're gonna do some cucumber. We're gonna do some tomato and then some red onion. I did pull out some salmon for later today because I totally forgot to defrost anything before I went to the gym. So that's like a foolproof way of getting some food in later today. So salmon is out. And for lunch, I'm just going to have some of the ceviche that I had yesterday for lunch. Because let me tell you, it was a lot of ceviche. So that's gonna be good for lunch because I still have that. Also, just making myself a mental note, I have to upload a video today, lest I forget like I did on Friday. I will be reading during today's sprint, which is exciting because a lot of the time I'm working during sprints instead of actually reading. And so today I get to read, which I love because again, we're, as you saw yesterday, we're really into a fragile enchantment and I'm really enjoying it. And I really want to see what's going to happen next. And I want to see them get together and the romance develop and all the good things. So I also obviously need to see that and we're gonna get to see it today. We'll talk after I eat, but let's assemble a bagel. being yellow friends. I love this lighting we've got going on at the moment. I know that the alternative is not much better. Oh wait, maybe it could be. I know you guys kind of like the moody lighting. I know I for sure do. Let's just turn off the light real quick. Hold up. Sprints have ended. I'm currently boiling potatoes, which is honestly unimportant for the update I'm about to give you, but just thought I'd share that a girl is making dinner. The salmon defrosted and it looks like strangely suspicious, <laughs> just color wise, because it's typically like a salmon shade. And this is... It almost looks like the color it should be when it's cooked. So like a light pink. It's odd. I'm gonna sniff it in a little bit. I haven't opened it yet because it's not time for me to cook it yet. But when it is time to cook it, I'm gonna sniff it. Give it a proper, a <laughs> proper sniff so that I can see if the salmon's fine or not. And if it isn't, I still have some ceviche. So we're gonna scrap up some ceviche and potatoes and a side salad. It's gonna be a weird meal if it gets to that, but that's unimportant because we're still gonna get the food in. But all that to say, I did read a fragile enchantment and I actually read more than I thought I would. So my plan initially for today's sprint was to just read throughout all of it and really get into a fragile enchantment because the live show is on Saturday. I'm also going to take these off because I feel like I look ridiculous and I'm probably talking louder than I should because I have those on. I was thinking, oh, maybe I'd get to like page maybe like 200, which would then leave me to have like 170 pages left. No, baby, I have 100 pages left, which is fantastic. So I'll definitely either finish this tonight or tomorrow morning first thing. Either way, not mad about it at all because that means I'll have it well done before Friday, which is amazing. And so this book I am loving. I am loving it a lot more than I thought I would. But Regency stuff for me is so tricky because I can either really love it or really hate it. And it goes the same for any sort of Victorian era. Honestly, anything that has big dresses and a carriage, I have to be very much in the mood for it. Otherwise, I am just going to slug through it. But this is just the perfect amount of cozy, magical, regency, and romantic for it to all mesh up in something that I could really enjoy. The focus is so much more on the interpersonal relationships happening in the book and the politics of the countries that are involved in the story, which I find so cool. And so it's honestly super easy to breeze through, which I am quite surprised at because I've never read an Alice and Saft book, so I wasn't quite sure which way it would swing. But the connection between Kit and Neve is absolutely incredible. Incredible. It is the exact type of angst and development that I love in YA fantasy. And so I love the fact that he is attempting to come across very standoffish, very much, I don't care about you. I don't want to be near you. I don't even like your craft. In fact, my people are supposed to hate your people. So like, I don't even want anything to do on that end, but that is all pretend. And so underneath that facade, you have got somebody who cares very deeply for her. Because like I mentioned earlier, she's honestly the first person to see him for exactly who 
he is. She's not taking any of his bullshit and she very genuinely just cares for him and everybody around her. Like this girl truly does not have a single mean bone in her body. And so anybody that's around her, she will truly attempt to give them her best and to be very nurturing and very supportive and just very loving. And I think that is something that he hasn't seen for a really long time and he does talk about it. So I love how she is this very positive presence, not only in his life, but seemingly in every other character's life. And so that aspect I'm enjoying. And once these two actually get into the romantic side of things, he makes it be known. I don't want to be apart from you. I don't want to be without you. I don't want to imagine a life without you. And I do not plan on casting you aside or leaving you out on the street because you are the girl I want. And this marriage that I am going into is solely political. If it would be a possibility for it to not happen, I would choose that. But I cannot choose that because it's all for politics and it all has this really big reason to happen. And so I can't wait to see how that's going to pan out because it, it is very much that for both parties both for Kit and Rosa, who is his fiance. She also doesn't want to be a part of this, but politically they're both kind of pawns in this bigger game. And so I can't wait to see how that's going to pan out. I love that most of our characters as well are queer. So I love that aspect because they're all, and it's not explicitly said which sexuality we are observing, but they all either seem on the pan or bi spectrum. So I quite love that because there definitely seems to be this, this huge understanding that it really really doesn't matter like who it is as long as they're vibing like energetically with the person they would totally date them and imagine something romantically and so I love that all of our characters are very much openly themselves in that sense that aspect of the book has also been very enjoyable and then aside from that all of the side characters that we have seen more and more of throughout the story so Mariam, Rosa, Sinclair and Jack even and then obviously Kit and Neve like all of these side characters and main characters are making for such a compelling story because we see everybody around Kit and Neve not only have their own separate like scheming or drama or you know our happenstances going on but they are also very much embroiled into the thing that's happening between these two people and they're like dude you guys are not supposed to be doing this so y'all better come apart from each other because y'all are gonna fuck everything up and we can't risk that but it's so noticeable that everybody's like we can't deny it like this man doesn't like anybody. How are we gonna hide the fact that he likes her? Because it's fucking obvious. And so I love the way that all of the side characters are helping each of the main characters respectively, but they also have their own plot lines and their own lives and personalities going and how they are, you know, reacting and, and helping out in that way too. I just really love what's happening. And this reading experience is kind of reminding me, not necessarily in writing or the tone of the book, but experience wise, it's reminding me of when I read Caraval and Once Upon a Broken Heart there's just something so enchanting and whimsical about this world and although the prose is not purple at all it's just it's very kind of straight up prose I really like the setting and the backdrop of it that makes it seem so much more otherworldly than it actually is and so that aspect has also been very very cool and so I'm loving the experience of reading this and there was a not so subtle <laughs> mention of a character that's exactly like Princess Di, which I thought was hilarious because of how unsubtle it was. So there's that. We're making progress with the book. I'll definitely finish it in like the next 12 hours or so. So I'll keep you updated on that. And I'm gonna go make dinner now. And the light is fluctuating. So love it so much. <laughs> Buenas and welcome to a new day my friends. Today is Thursday and I keep thinking about Wicked. I have been listening to Broadway soundtracks all day and all I can keep thinking about is one. Are you there God? It's me Fiona. I just keep thinking about Shrek the Musical and then one short day in the Emerald City. <laughs> Those are the 
only two things I can think about today, but welcome to Thursday. I have been doing desk work all day long. Had to wipe out all of my SD cards because all of them were full and it was full of just old footage that I already have on my external hard drives. So I had to go in, import footage into separate folders, wipe the SD cards, all of which can take quite a bit of time. I need to double check and just make sure that everything is in their respective spots. And so I had to do that. A few Patreon things to put up, things to reschedule, things to schedule live show wise into the weekend and so that's virtually been the day i still have a few other things to do like mainly i have to reply to youtube comments for the video i put up yesterday and then reply to the comments that i wasn't able to respond to for my march dbr video so that needs to get done first update of today though is that i managed to finish a fragile enchantment yesterday and it is well loved and annotated and i am so excited and ready to do a little flip through moment for patreon as a book club exclusive so i do need to film that either when i come back as i'm about to go out or tomorrow morning the book is done i am giving it five stars it was such a good book i do think the ending was just a little bit rushed in comparison to what i would have liked but i think the vibes were ultimately there and everything from the magic to the conflict to the politics to the romance the angst to the good characters involved in the plot they were all very present and that's the type of story that i like something that's very well-rounded and I did feel the chemistry a lot between the two main characters and so the book is a 10 out of 10 for me. I absolutely loved it. I am about to go out because every time my grandparents come to the city because they don't live in the city, anytime they do come over we try and make it as special an event as we humanly can and that typically involves taking them out to eat to their favorite places or to new places we think they're going to enjoy and all spending time together family-wise and also I like to treat them to a few things and just get them things that I know know they can't necessarily get in the town that they live in or that they can't themselves buy and so I'm going to head out with my brother to one of my favorite stores today it's the dangerous store okay it's called La Rocha I've taken you guys before it's kind of like our equivalent to Walmart Target all the things and so I am gonna go see what I'm able to find I know for my grandma I'm going to get like loads of household stuff so candles and scented things that I know she'll be able to place all around the house and maybe you know a little perfume as well for her and so for my grandpa on the other side also perfume I'm gonna try and, and find some things for him as well and see what I'm able to find on that end and then a few things for them together outside of like the home stuff so I'm thinking maybe like a few puzzles and some things that they can do together as they're having like a cup of coffee or something and just do like a little gift back moment and some of their favorite snacks and stuff so that I can give that to them tomorrow as also as, as a little <laughs> gift I guess to ease the stress as they're coming over for not so great reasons but we're about to head out do all of those things and then I'll be coming back and I have a live show at 7 p.m which is a game night so I'll be playing a little to the left which I've been loving TikTok has got me obsessed with this game I had never heard of this game before and I got a TikTok of a girl just playing a little to the left and it's basically this this puzzle game where it just scratches your brain just the right amount you have to like these types of things though but it's a puzzle game and you have to fit everything exactly as is and every every puzzle is made to fit obviously like perfectly and so you have to put the pencils in a very specific positioning and you have to put the kitchen utensils in very specific spots and I have been obsessed with that game for like a hot second and so today I'm gonna play that with my patrons and have a good time so I'm gonna have to do that tonight but aside from that those are the plans for the day aside from the worky work and so let us go out I'll take you guys with me obviously we'll go shopping my grandparents have the biggest green thumb and they have everything in their backyard they have got grapes they have got veggies they have got and i mentioned specifically grapes because grapes are not supposed to grow here at least not in, in like the climate they live they live in and so they've got grapes and all types of veggies and other fruits and all types of plants and it's just very fucking gorgeous and so i know they wanted to carve out a spot for pet grass so that their dog theo does not have to eat regular grass but the grass that's actually meant to be good for him and so i'm going to get them the seeds for that and all the good stuff and so it's bound to be a good round.
as I sit here and edit, I realize that I never recorded an outro for you guys, but I spent the entire weekend with my grandparents after this game night, and so I don't really have an outro, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope that you're having a lovely, fantastic day wherever you are. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Patreon is linked down below in case you want extra content, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you.